to you Venom but Archie too They will all be here for you On comics, comics, comics TV Comics, comics, comics TV Fantasy and then on me What's it gonna be now? Alternative and mainstream too Here every week for you On comics, comics, comics TV Comics, comics, comics TV Good evening and welcome to the third annual Comics TV Halloween Spooktacular. Comics TV is your weekly guide to the world of comic books. I'm Mark Grizzle. And I'm Steve Prisdola. Each and every week we bring you the latest comic book news, reviews, and interviews with the stars. Today's show is dedicated to anybody who has seen the last two Halloween Spooktaculars. We, we salute, salute you! you! So, let's kick off today's bombastic show with my pal, Cousin Steve, and the, the Mainstream Review. For my first spooktacular book, Turok, Dinosaur Hunter, number 38, $2.50 from Valiant Comics. Tim Truman is the writer, Rags Morales and Randy Elliott is the artists, and Inker is Andrew Cobalt. Island of the Nazi gorilla monkey ugly looking women. Is it true the king is still alive? These gorilla looking women tried to raise their almighty king. One problem is they got two kings, Hitler, king of the Nazis, and Elvis, king of the blues. Thank you very much. And they want to raise the almighty, and in the mix up, they raise, thank you very much, Elvis. It is up to Turok to destroy these really ugly women and the king. Thank you very much. This one, the art was excellent for a Turok book. Rags Morales really hit it off on this one. It was great. Story in this one, first time I've ever seen Hitler and Elvis in a comic book together. This was a definite hit. Collectability, I don't think so. If it was a two-part series, I would think twice about that on collectability. And the rating scale from 1 through 10, I give this one a 9.5, just because it was a really, really good book. For my second great book this week, Technophage number 6 from Techno Comics, $1.95 US. Writer is Rick Veach. The artist and the inker is Bryant Talboat. When Cassidy challenges the Technophage in his chambers, in his judgment to destroy her love, she freaks out and finds that Rob is not dead. When Rob comes back to Earth and challenges Technophage to a life and death battle in which Rob thinks he wins, or does he? Life will never be the same for poor Rob. Hmm, the art in this one was crisp, clear, comes off the pages right at you. Clear, right at you. Yes, right at you. The story in this one, excellent book, but I would not recommend picking this one up unless you started from issue number one. Technophage is a very hard series to follow. Pick up number one and start from there. Collectability? Not. I don't think so. This one is not a collectible book, but it's good if you're a personal collector. Rating from one to ten, I give this one a 7.8 because it was an interesting book and the artwork was fabulous. That's my second review this week. For my third and final book this week, Spirit of the Dragon, The Beginning. Two dollars from Double Edge Comics. Writer is Richard McDowell. Artist is Mickey McDowell, and inker is Ed McDowell. It's keeping it in a family. Dead Men Don't Lie. It's the perfect story name for this one. A nuclear experiment go wrong, gone wrong, and we have the walking dead in the ranks of the military, like we don't now, anyways. <laughs> and the spirit of the dragon group must stop them before they conquer the world. The art in this one was good for an independent book. Very crisp, clean, came right out at you, explained a lot. The story... It's good for an independent, but this definitely has a lot of possibilities to become a more expanded book. We've seen a lot of these books, the independents always deal with the dead and zombies and this and that. This one was a little different. It had like a dragon group attacking them. It's pretty neat, but a hey. mm. collectability, I would say it's up to your personal taste. If you think that it's worth collecting, pick it up. If not, eh, 
Look at it in the store, throw it back on a shelf if you don't like it. On a rating scale from one to 10, I give this one a 7.8 because I really did like the story. And like we say a lot of times, there's a lot of good independent books out there. And that's it for my spooktacular books this week on a mainstream review. And we'll be back right after this. Barriers. You break through them. You are immortal. You die alone. In the age of dis ease, passion is still possible. Be caring, be careful. Before 1945, chemical farming was unheard of in America. Now it's a fact of life and death. Wise up, America. Support organic farming. This week on the Comics News, Marvel Comics has announced the launching of a brand new four issue comic book series based on the Sega video game Comics Zone. The concept of the game is much different from other video games. Working hand in hand with the game designer and producer, Marvel has taken this video game and turned it into a comic book or into a book game fans will want to read. Every stage of the game is shown and game tips are laced throughout the story. The storyline is about a 19 year old comic creator who gets sucked into his own comic book trading places with a villain named Mortis. Mortis is now in charge of the comic and tries to draw a demise for our hero. This er there is action, adventure and more with Comic Zone debuting in no November for $2.50 from Marvel Comics. Techno Comics is preparing for its one year anniversary by providing a free gift for every fan. All seven Techno Comics titles shipping in November will be polybagged with a free Techno Classic issue. That's two comics for the price of one. The free issues will be selected at random from the Techno Back Issue archives. One out of every ten of these back issues will include a gold plate signature Techno Comics from the first three titles published Leonard Nimoy's Prime Mortals with a Nimoy. Nimoy autograph, Neil Gaiman's Mr. Hero with a Gaiman autograph, and Gene Roddenberry's The Lost Universe with a Mahaj Bharat Redberry autograph, which is his wife. This uh, is a great opportunity to introduce fans to the other techno titles without costing the realtor or one of the fans more money. So make sure your issues are polybagged when you pick them up in November. You will never know what that slimy retailer might do. He might substitute something or take out that autographed book, and then you can grab him by the throat and tear his heart out for doing it. Always check. And that's from Comics TV. Ren and Steepy, Nickelodeon's animated team up in, of an exasperated chihuahua and a simpleton cat are the dynamic duo of laughs for the 90s. They are liked around the world, including, of all places, Australia. To prove it, Dynamic Marketing, the hottest trading card maker down under, released Rain and Steampy trading cards based on the heat show last winter, and the fans went wild. So in the spirit of global economies, we will now make this series available for U.S. consumption. To make it, to give it an American feel, they were going to include a slice of apple pie with each order, but instead settled on a special 18-card subset not included in the original version. More than 60% of the card images are original card art created for this series, and they were exclusive. 
<sighs> More, um, 100, the 106 card set features 54 episode cards, 6 character cards, 6 Dr. Stupid cards, 24 Mega Scope cards, 5 A to Z Ren and Stimpy cards, plus Kitty Glitter cards, and the 18 cards International Idiots subset featuring a postcards from around the world theme. This series has a limited production, so if you like Ren and Stimpy, run out and get yours now. Each 7 card pack retails for $1.75. Malibu Comics has teamed up with famed film director James Cameron to launch Terminator 2, the comic book series. Malibu has created two distinct T2 miniseries, Terminator, Present War Cybernetic Dawn, and Terminator 2, Future War Nuclear Dawn. In the Cameron tradition, the comics will capture the excitement and the kinetic energy of the movie. There will be good storytelling, and excruciating detail in the hardware, including all the movie's characters and the storylines that added in new personalities and situations, will make T2 the comic book series unique. Fans will get to see the world of Terminator from two subsets' eyes, Sarah Connors and her son John Connor, and there will be both types of Terminators, the T-800 and the T-1000. Both issue number one ship in November with a cover price of $2.50, the stories will meet in a dynamic clash in the March 96 number zero issue when the present series runs into the future series. Look for it at your store very soon. My first book today is from Broadway Comics. This is Jim Shooter's brand new project. Broadway Comics is a subsidiary of Broadway Video out of New York. They have a new concept in the industry which is to send out previews of upcoming issues to stores so they know whether they want to order them or not. I like this concept. It will take some dedication and work, but could prove very successful if their titles are liked. The first book is Powers That Be, featuring Fatal and Starseed. Starseed is a kind of typical superhero story, although it was enjoyable. Fatal is a kissing bandit of sorts who sucks the life and energy out of her victims, gaining their power and apparently their skills and knowledge. Both stories are decent, and Jim Shooter is a comic industry diehard. I would give both stories a shot. Initial grade is a 7 on the CTV rating scale. My next book is Heavy Metal Magazine, September 95 edition. This is a serious adult-only comic publication. It is very good. Great art, great stories, including the epic long Mand Mandragore. This story takes most of the magazine and is very good. It's $4.50, but it is full color and full of erotic adventures, futuristic football games, women, creatures, and more. Worth every penny in my mind. There are some that claim its quality has gone downhill over the years, or the stories are all the same, but aren't all comics the same? I like it. If you're an adult looking for some good adventure or action comics, heavy metal may be what you're looking for. Available on most newsstands, so look for it. <laughs> Strange Haven is a new book by Gary Spencer Millage. It's self-published and produced in England and printed here in the States. Issue number two costs $2.95 US. This is a good graphic story telling several intertwined tales about life in Strange Haven, a village in England. Millage's art is very good with simple lines and detail making it very realistic. The story is enjoyable, reminding me of Strangers in Paradise or a long story in graphic form. Kind of slow moving, but not boring. Strange Haven number two by Gary Spencer Millage gets a 7.5 on the CTV Halloween scale this week. My last book is Strangers in Paradise. I happen to have number seven here for your reviewing pleasure. Terry Moore is the mastermind behind this $2.75 book put out independently on his abstract studio label. This book is ultimate. This is a story full of emotion, love, action, adventure, and intimacy. This issue concentrates on Francine and David talking about Kachu being missing. It has an unusual surprise ending, making me wet with anticipation of the next issue. Moore has ability to create believable characters with great art and story time. His book attracts many women readers, and it's amazing characters and ability to make all women look beautiful. This is a 10 in my book, and that's it for the independent reviews today.
FCC's gonna come and throw us in jail. I'm gonna tell you something, Clay. What is it, Morgan? I'm better than you. I've always been better. <laughs> I can beat you, Clay. Now you hit it. And you better hit it fast. I won't play. I won. This is Do Review. Each and every week, me and Michael try and take a book. Mike? Both read it. Me and Hillary here. Take a book each week, read it, and we give you our vast variations of opinions on it. This week we're doing Xander number one, Xander Lost Universe number one from Techno Comics. It's $2.25. The writer is Ron Fortier. Art is by Ron Randall, and the anchor is Aaron McClellan. Steve, okay. it, why don't you tell us about this? Exactly, exactly what I thought about the book. Myself. This book was a typical, let's get some spaceships, take them into space, something's happening to the one planet blowing up, destroying half the spaceships, everybody transports onto one spaceship, poom, here comes aliens, let's have a war, uh, shadow creatures are in here. Um, not Shadow Creatures, the movie, Shadow Creatures. Uh, they come around, they're trying to infest Xander's body. Um, this is a rehashed story, blah, blah, blah. That's all it is. I've seen so many stories like this. The artwork in here was very good. I gotta admit, we're very, very good. Women look very good. Even the guys look very good in here. Michael would tell you about the Hillary will tell you about that. But um, we've seen so many rehashed storylines where same thing, spaceships, planets exploding, Dying races, you know, when can I go home? Let's find a new planet to invade, blah, blah, blah. Um, what did you think, Michael? I must agree. The, um, the storyline, it wasn't anything that great. Uh, the artwork and the color are very good. Yes. Um, Techno's trying. I don't think this is one of their better titles. Um, I can't find anything that I really like in this. I like some science fiction stories, but this one wasn't anything that great. There's they a couple nice uh, women in here. Uh, because you know I am attracted to women, so yes, you are, Hillary. But that's about the only thing in here. Another is. thing is, Techno sinking some big bucks into actually making this into a movie uh, to be released sometime in '97. Well, Miramax, I believe, is is teaming up with uh, Techno for a couple of stories. I yeah, believe a couple of theirs. I believe they're also doing the Mike Danger story. Yeah. So they're teaming together to try and produce a few of the Techno movies, but. And Prime Mortals is the other movie. I mean, as a there. movie, it might work somewhat decent. Um, as a sci-fi movie, because sci-fi movies, you read a book and you, you watch a movie, you find out you like the movie a lot better than the book anyways. Right. This, uh, this is all right. I mean, what is your grade on this one? I would have to give it about a 6.3. Yeah, this one, I, I, I and really And a CTV didn't, scale. Yeah, I, wouldn't, I didn't like it that much. I'd give it about a 5. And um, that's probably being generous. The art, the art and the color and everything are are what's getting the points here. The story is not something I would read again. Yeah. Uh, if I was forced to read it, and they tied me down, and... Uh, like Bill, and what I he think, does? And I think I might like that. But um, if they tied me down and made me uh, made me read this, then... Um, Bill's going to tie you down, make you read the Bill of Rights again. Mm. Mm. Cut it out! I like this book. No, <laughs> I'll give it a five. I gave this one a 6.3. And that's it on Duel Review this week. And we'll be right back after this. He plays a good woman. <laughs> He's going to get us arrested. With This week's 30-second mini-comic review is the Ashcan edition of Vampire Mayu from Antarctic Press. This manga book is based on the Japanese animated series of the same name, but the book explores much more. It looks promising with a different type of female vampire than the Vampirilla kind. Look for issue one coming out in October. And that's it for the 30-second mini-comic review today. It's time for an interview. Who do we have today, Steve? We have the second part of our wonderful three-part series with 
Mark Jukes, the ever popular man from Jamestown, New York. So let's take off to visit with Mr. Mark Jukes. How many companies are involved How many? with yours right now? Uh, last count, well, we had 144 in the first two weeks of the inception to get a hold of us, okay? I have more calls coming in than I have going out, and usually there's a beep going on within the five to ten minutes I try to get the spiel out to you on the phone, which is another publisher. Almost, uh, I would say more than 50% of all the publishers involved so far, and we're talking about people like Joe Monks and, and CFD. We're also talking about Sirius and Joe Lindsner on the opposite side. I got both of them, and neither one of them have to talk to each other, okay? We're apolitical here. We can have a format where they can both that they can both en engage their activities and not engage each other. Uh, okay. We we have uh, right now current we've got about 174 publishers I think uh, confirmed out of lists and listen you guys have sent me all the lists you guys have sent me have been more than half of them have been filled and or contacted. We have more calls coming in from cold contacts that I call it, that I didn't refer them or didn't contact them myself than I have going out or messages being left. Uh, frankly, to be honest, nobody has told us no that we've contacted. Anybody who has said no or held off would be, an example. for a good example, would be like Image, who was already going exclusive with Diamond. And we had a foot in the door with Top Cow and Tim Hernandez and those guys, they really loved the idea and what we're doing. Kitchen Sink, of course, went exclusive with Capital City, as did uh, Cerebus and Aardvark Vanaheim. Uh, as far as anybody who's not exclusive with another distributor or Marvel or DC, they're with me, or they haven't heard about me. And I'm not lying, uh, uh, I, I'd be glad to, I provided lists to the likes of Ed Beard Jr. Uh, for verification purposes, and, they, and that's not even why he wanted them. The ulterior motive was so that he could call these guys up and say, yeah, he's legit, I'm behind him, I'm all for what he's doing, I like what he's doing. I think what people like about me is that I am, I, I, someone asked me the other day how long I have been into this, how long I've been doing comics, writing them, reading them, all the above. I, I looked him in the eye and I honestly answered him, second grade. And I haven't taken a break since my first vacation was The Hobbit in Mr. Nordstrom's class in sixth grade, and I haven't been back since. Yeah. Mm. Wow. It's time for some quick comic reviews. Smoot, number one, by Skip Williamson, the lovable 70s underground Smoot in his own comic. Some weird comics make this a very unique book indeed. Next, I have Parts Unknown by Bo Smith and Brad Gorby, number one. Some excellent image quality artwork highlights this interesting alien infested book worth looking for from Night Press. Mickey Spillane's Mike Danger number four. I love this book. Excellent art and story. Make this a book worth picking up. And it's only $1.95, full color and worth every penny. A-Bomb number six and seven from Antarctic Press. Adults only manga porno comics. <gasps> oh, if you like this stuff, you'll like that stuff. Simpsons comics number 10. An OK Simpsons tale with a flip quickie book and a good clean Simpson fun. Genius, number 13 from Anarch Press. More adult only comics with an animal twist. Funny, furry, and sexy. I like them. And lastly, Stray Bullets, number 6 by David Lapham. Just when you think you're catching on, Lapham throws a curveball. This story is way out in left field. I suppose it ties in somewhere down the road where we'll know who or where we'll find out soon, hopefully. Another excellent tale from this master comic creator. And I believe that's almost it today, huh? Steve? Yes. Mm. This week, we'd like to thank you for tuning in to our spooktacular show. We get to do this once a year. Michael is spanking his monkey right now live on the air because it was a bad monkey. Bad monkey. Don't worry. Stop bad, spanking bad, your monkey. Bad monkey. Oh, you bad monkey. <laughs> So, you we'd like to thank you again for tuning in. If you've been with us for the last three years, you'll know this is our third exciting, spooktacular show. We've been through a lot in the last couple of years, so stick with us and uh, keep watching our comics. Yes, thank you for tuning in to Comics TV, our third spooktacular. It's great to have you. If you have any questions, if you want to know what size dress I wear, please write to us, email us, anything. Uh, we'll be happy to invite you here to our into the studio and Mike will be touring live in this dress too. Yes, I will. We're going on tour and I will be wearing this dress and I'll have my mom. So, as we say each and every week, when you stop in that comic star, 
to patronize them and buy the books that we talked about, tell them you've seen it on Comics TV! Bye-bye. What's it gonna be now? Alternative and mainstream too. Here every week for you on Comics. Comics. Comics TV. Comics. Comics. Comics TV. Comics.